In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. What is the greatest commandment of the law? Um, make sure your hands are washed. Um, don't work on Sunday. What is the greatest commandment? Jesus puzzled over that for a lifetime, and then in today's gospel, he comes up with the answer. Let's pray that our hearts may be open to what Jesus has to say to us. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If you ever wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words to our response read are, I love you, O Lord, my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, 
You know what sort of people we were among for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and Acacia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Acacia, but in every place your faith has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us that sort of reception we had among you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. The scholar of the law that we heard in this gospel reading to test Jesus, surely he knew the answer to the rabbinical question that he asked, for he had studied all of the law and the Torah. And Jesus does not disappoint him, as his answer mirrors what is stated in Deuteronomy. Chapter 6, verse 5, that we are to love the Lord, our God, with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our strength. Jesus then adds, though what was probably a surprise to the scholar, is the second is like it, that we love our neighbor as ourselves. To those who are here today, this should be pretty simple. We are at Mass, after all, 
unless your mother made you do it. You're here because you love God and want to give him the praise, honor, and adoration that God is due. This is not too complicated. If someone were to ask you, why do you go to Mass on Sunday? Say, well, when you go, you could go golfing. Or perhaps, since the weather's changing, bowling. Or just shopping. Or sleep in, as many do. What is your answer? I bet it resembles what Jesus said to the lawyer. If we remembered the Ten Commandments, which you probably learned for most of you somewhere around the second grade, and for some of us with sister, Robert Ann taught me second grade. Sister Robert Ann, Franciscan from Mishawaka, Indiana. Um, very good, excellent sister. Taught me all the commandments. Had the old Baltimore catechism with the blue cover wore on off because we used it so much. But she made sure we knew our Ten Commandments. And the third commandment is, you shall honor the Lord your God keeps the holy this Sundays throughout the year, which we knew. But I would hope that your faith has matured over the years. Whether you're in high school, or let's just say a little over than 65 or so. It may be the second part of Jesus' answer that can cause us problems, though. What do we have to do to love our neighbor? But that's only the first part of the question. Maybe not for Jesus and his crowd, but who exactly is our neighbor? The guy that lives next door to me, who only comes there in the summer and then goes home to East Grand Rapids? I think he liked it because one of our presidents was from up there. Uh, never see him in the wintertime. Once in a while, they'll come die and go on the lake that's frozen and cross country ski, but I don't see him much. And the other neighbor talks to me only when I can see him in the driveway. Don't know why, never did anything to him. I think he works nights though now and it's harder to see him. What do we have to do to find who our neighbor is? The reading from Exodus gives some clues to this one. And it states, aliens should not be oppressed not widows or orphans, poor neighbors that you have lent money to. So I would say, basically, it is those among us who may be in some way less fortunate. I'm sure that most of us here do what we can in charity for those in need. We probably donate to the food bank or whatever it is here. Uh, that we donate to, bring in the food, you know, not too many macaroni and cheeses. And we all, hopefully, are com committed to contributing to the Kalamazoo Diocesan Service Appeal. And there might be a place called the Charitable Union Giving House Clothing Store. And maybe the Red Cross for Disaster vic Victims and a lot of other charities as well. And some of us may even help out on a Sunday or a Saturday to feed the homeless a meal somewhere in this vicinity. Or you just may do something to help those who are in need on a personal basis. I don't know about you, but I don't even know what cash looks like for the most part. You can do everything with the credit card. Get gas, run the card. Go to the grocery store, spend about $100 more than you want to, and you can get the groceries you got five years ago. Maybe before COVID, I don't know. But I make it a habit to carry tens and twenties, 
fives occasionally in my wallet. Somebody asked me for a dollar for a cup of coffee, I'll give him five and hope he can get a Mc whatever it is he wants at McDonald's. Some other people will say, I need a bus ticket. I'll say, well, you can call this number, but here's $20 to get you started to get you back home because you're trapped down here. Now, I know sometimes he's going straight to the liquor store and I can't help him. Well, maybe the pot store now, I don't know. Um, but anyway, it's important that we recognize the need to be there for those who need us. I ask you though, how do we affect the collective community and national efforts? Well, as you know, we have a looming, let me say looming, upcoming election. I believe it is necessary to vote for the candidates that look out for all those in need. Now, I'm not identifying a party here. I'm just saying vote. Maybe you should think about voting the person and not necessarily the national party. But that's up to you. I'm not going to preach on that. I cannot tell you who that is that you need to vote for. First of all, I probably don't have a clue until I get something in the mail or my wife hands me the thing and says, here's the full ticket. I think it's a women's voting group. We'll send out online now the whole ticket, Republican, Democrat, the whole thing. And you can read who's running for what. Dog catcher in Barry County. I don't think we have one. He'd have to pick up too many deer, and I don't think he wants to do that. Um, <clears throat> but I can tell you that what we need to do is we all have to decide for ourselves who is the best candidate. We have to consider not just our own point of view when voting, but of all those in need who maybe can't vote. Jesus was not trapped by the lawyer's question. Do not be either by online ads that come on your phone whether you want them or not, what you see on television, unless you're smart enough or have the money to get a, what is that, fire stick thing so you can listen to TV with no commercials. And they get done sooner. So if you say, I'm going to stay up another half hour, you can get a 40-minute show in and still get to bed on time. Um, perhaps we can just take some time and reread the scriptures from today. And regardless of our political leanings, consider instead what Jesus says and how you believe and vote your conscience the next time you need to vote. Coming soon to your neighborhood polling station. Now, just in case anybody interpreted that wrong, I did not tell you who to vote for, what party, and I don't want to know. You can wear a lapel pin, that's okay. I just prefer the one that says I voted. Thank you. <laughs>